Hello, thank you so much for checking out Discern to Learn. I'm so glad you've come here today and that you have found me. So I want to encourage you, first of all, never to learn alone. If Discern to Learn isn't the place for you to find support, I encourage you to find support somewhere because this journey of education and parenting is something that we all need mentors for. You need a mentor and your student needs a mentor. We need people to come alongside of us to take our hand and help us down the road that is before us. So today I wanna to introduce you to the offerings that I have and ways that I can be that mentor for your student. So today I'm just going to take you for a journey through my programs. But before we do that, you should be asking, who is this person? Why do they wanna teach my children? And should I even trust them? So first of all, that's a really good question, and I really hope you're asking it, because if you are, then you are asking the right kinds of questions, and those are the things that we want to teach your student as well. First of all, I'm Teresa Peters. I'm a mom of two students. Uh, well, I guess I'm a mom. I have one student who is already in his career. He has graduated, and I have another student who is in grade nine. We homeschooled for the first number of years, the majority of their um, schooling, and then they each moved on to what was best for them. So that was a very hard decision for me because I loved to homeschool and it had become part of who I was and part of my identity. But in the end, what really matters is what is best for our students, not what's best for us, not how we feel about it, but what's best for them. So. As we go through this, I'd like you to begin thinking about what is best for your student. So the other thing you need to know is who I am and should you trust me? I am a believer in Jesus Christ, and that is first and foremost the most important thing that you need to know. Over the past couple of years, God has really impressed on me that it's important for me to be who he created me to be and to not apologize for that. So this year, I have revamped everything. I have left behind all the pieces that were me apologizing, and I have embraced who I am in God and who he's made me to be and the mission that he has sent me on. So I'd like to introduce you to that program. Should you trust me? Well, that really depends. It depends what you believe and what you think about the world and what you believe to be true. First of all, I believe that words have power. So my words to your students are going to be powerful. They are going to be changed by my words. So I have to be someone that you trust. I believe that the word of God has power. I believe that knowing God's word, memorizing God's word, and living by God's word makes a huge impact in our lives and in the lives of others. We are called to be salt and light. We're called to be disciple makers, to be people who can give an answer for the hope that we have. And I hope to bring that to your students so that they can grasp their own personal worldview and they can hold it dear to their hearts and find out why they really believe what they believe. Words have changed the world already. Words continue to change the world. Words are powerful. Words have changed what is acceptable, what is considered sin. Well, in fact, sin is not even a word that's acceptable anymore in many circles. So words have changed everything and words will continue to change things. And I want to teach your student to change the world with their words and with their stand. So take a journey with me today to see if this is something that would interest you. The very basics of my program are that I run on a three-term calendar. So each term is the beginning and end of a piece of a course very often. And so each one stands alone. So it's three terms per year. And I offer tutoring classes for traditionally schooled students as well as homeschooled students. They're mixed. And I offer a language arts program specifically for homeschoolers grades 5 to 12. So I'm going to start with talking about the Level Up Language Arts skills and this is my tutoring program. I offer it for paragraphs and for essays and what this is is an opportunity for your student to commit wholeheartedly to set aside three months to focus, to give their full attention and learn to make a difference 
in their language arts. And they will absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, walk away in 12 weeks being able to write a persuasive paragraph and or a persuasive essay. Also, during that time, they are going to gain the confidence that comes from knowing that they can set goals and they can reach them. That the things that they thought they weren't good at, what they had to do was push through and work hard. So we learn how to take our bigger goals, how to divide them down into smaller goals, and how to reach those smaller goals with daily tasks. We have a habit tracker that helps students to evaluate whether or not they're meeting their daily goals. Each week in class, we discuss our wins, the things we did well, our difficulties, the things we struggled at, and maybe we fought through, and those are still wins. Just because something's hard doesn't mean it's not a win. And the things we failed at, and yes, I use the word fail, because failure is a part of life. And when we learn to look at failure as something that we can learn from and grow from and change from, then we found real success. I also teach students basic study and study skills, like taking notes immediately after class and reviewing them, and also the things that they will need for note taking and research. They will leave the program with their own custom made checklist that they have developed on their own that they've chosen the things to put on there based on their own personal learning gaps and roadblocks and the things that will help them to succeed when they're ready to write. So next time they're given any writing assignment and that panic rises up in them, they can stop and say, it's okay, I can do this. I just have to get out my plan. I can do this. They will see how to break it down into smaller pieces and how to achieve every piece along the way. Okay, isn't one-on-one -on -one tutoring better? I used to think so. I used to do one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and I don't anymore. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is a Band-Aid solution. One-on-one -on -one tutoring takes students who have a task that they want to do and helps them do it. If you want your student to learn how to wash the floor or to keep a kitchen clean, and you work beside them all the time, helping them do it, that doesn't mean they can do it on their own. And it's exactly the same with tutoring. It is a Band-Aid solution to get good grades to hire a tutor. And what the student learns is, I really don't know how to do this. I need this person to help me for all my assignments. What I want to teach my students is that they can learn the skills. They can have the confidence. They can reach out for themselves and get help. And they can do this on their own. That is what really matters. There's no reason for you to pay for tutoring for the rest of your student's high school career. That's a waste of money and it's a waste of time because then when they get to university, they still need a tutor. And what happens when they get into the real world? Who's going to tutor them then? Do you see the problem? We're raising adults. Let's work on adult skills. So virtual classes for me are the best solution all around. Because first of all, the one thing that your students want more than anything is to be with their peers. They don't wanna be with adults. They don't wanna hear what I have to say. They don't want to have any more input from another adult who has some expectation on them. So in a class of their peers, they have peer validation and they find that it's enjoyable. Now, I'm not for a second saying everything in life is enjoyable or that every task in my classes will be enjoyable. It will not be, but every single one will be necessary. Second of all, they see representation. So when your student reads a book or when they write an essay, they see that other people can always do it better. They read a book, it's a published author. Of course they do it better. Of course they do. They have experience, they have life experience, they have editors, they have publishers, all of that. So they see that and they think, I can't write. And then when they're writing an essay and they ask a teacher or a tutor or a parent for help, and the parent or teacher or tutor says, oh, will you just do this? What they think is that they just don't know how to do it and everybody else does. When they're in a class, they realize that other students are writing at their level or slightly above or slightly below. But in the end, 
There's nothing particularly wrong with their writing. They just have to learn to excel and to continue to grow. They start to see writing as something they can grow at and develop at and not something that you're either born with or not born with. The third thing is the environment. I don't accept just anyone in my classes. If students are going to be there unwillingly, if students are not willing to learn and grow and develop, I really don't want them in my classes. This is part of my plan for this year is to make my learning environment supportive and wonderful. Every student needs to want to learn and grow and develop. And when students are in an environment where people are learning and growing, challenging themselves, working hard, trying to excel, guess what? They feel out of place if they're not doing that too. So when they have bad days, they're gonna think, I've gotta finish this homework because you know, Mike, he's gonna have it done and his is gonna be better than mine if I don't work hard. So we have that kind of encouragement happening and that is the pressure piece. That is the peer pressure piece. So the peer pressure, is something that is vitally important that we don't have in a one-on-one -on -one situation that we can have in a classroom situation. If you want more specifics on the tutoring program, there is a video in the playlist on my YouTube. So you can definitely check out more specifically how I teach that program and all of the pieces that are involved in that. For my language arts programs, they are very specifically created and designed to fortify a worldview to work on the success strategies and to help students to learn to be critical thinkers, readers, and to be persuasive speakers and writers. So here we are. The goals for language arts are to fortify worldview, to create critical thought, so to be able to think while we're reading, to wonder what it is that the person's trying to teach us. What are they trying to make me believe? to think logically and critically of arguments and to be able to have a logical and educated argument on a topic with someone respectfully. And it's very important for us to be able to talk to people who disagree with us. So that is important. And third, to be persuasive in their speech and writing. We do public speaking in the classes so that students will, first of all, always in class, we're having discussions and then we actively do um, speeches and we also do writing. So we do essay writing where we learn persuasive, persuasive writing skills and logic skills and how to avoid logical fallacies. And we have the study and success skills the same as we have in the tutoring class. So students still get that habit tracker. They still get the one-on-one -on -one support. They still get the help that they need to move on. So if you're looking for more specifics about the language art classes, there's a video for each and every class on my YouTube playlist. I will tell you a little bit about how the term goes, because for every one of my tutoring classes and every one of my language arts classes, the term follows the same plan. Each term begins with a student vision call one on one with the student where I discuss with them what success means to them. And if they want to be successful when they're like 30, what's that going to look like? And then what will it look like when they're 20 then? And, and how will we count, go backwards to try to figure out, well, then what skills do we have to develop now in order to be successful later? We will work on setting up their own habit tracker where I ask them to make academic goals, physical goals, emotional goals, spiritual goals, to consider the things in their lives that really matter and to set goals for self-improvement in those areas so that they realize that they can change and grow. And we set up the learning management system. I work on Google Classroom, so every student will need a Gmail address. Throughout the entire course, your student will have one virtual class per week, plus homework for most of the days of the week. And they will also have one-on-one -on -one support this is something that in the past some students have reached out for and some students haven't and I didn't have it formalized. So I wanted to make sure it was formalized. Make sure students have a path that they can follow to get help. Self-advocating and recognizing that you need help, how to find help, and then going and getting help 
is vital. And this is something that many of us didn't learn until well into adulthood. And I think many adults still haven't learned how to do. If we want to exceed in school and in life, we need to be able to advocate for our own needs and to be able to ask for help. So I ask students to click that button, book an appointment with me, and then I will be able to help them. Halfway through the term, we have like a 20 minute, half hour parent student acceleration call where we just touch base, see how your student's doing, see if we need to um, amp up their learning and give them some specific tasks that the rest of the class may not have, help them to keep working towards their goals. Maybe for them, they just need to have some goals tweaked on their habit tracker. So we just wanna to work together and touch base with parents to make sure parents are included in the discussion. And at the end of the term, we have the parent student celebration conference. This is when we go back. We look at how far your students come. We compare their beginning writing with their end writing. We talk about how they've learned and grown over the term. And this is so encouraging for students because sometimes we just don't look back and we don't see how far we've come. And maybe they do know a little bit, but it's always good for them to hear from other people and to have their parents to be proud of them. Can I mix and match? Absolutely, you can mix and match. So the beauty of this three-term program is that if you don't want to take writing and literature all year for your student, if they have other interests, maybe you can take a fiction and two language arts. You could take a tutoring class at the beginning, either paragraphs or if they're going into six to eight, or essays if they're going into um, maybe grade seven, eight, or into the high school program. If they're not quite ready for those things, then that would be a great place to start. So you could mix and match, do whatever is the best for your student. At the end of every term, you get a report for that course, okay? So if you take the language arts for the whole thing, it's going to show you did language arts A, you did language arts B, you did language arts C, and you know, it's okay. There's never a place it's going to say that you weren't complete. So if you hand in a report to your homeschool office, they're not gonna say, but you didn't finish this. It's not like that at all. You will have a complete language arts and it will include all the pieces that you choose to put in it. And that is the beauty of homeschooling, at least in provinces and states that have a free plan like that, where you can choose whatever you want for your student. Do you have more questions about how this works? First of all, a lot of those questions will be answered by the course videos on my YouTube channel. And there's a playlist there. So it has every one of the courses in it. And are you ready to make a plan? Do you wanna have a call with me and talk to me about how we can make a plan for your student? Um, you will leave the call with an outline of a plan for your student, whether or not you choose to go with me. And also, you know, if perhaps I'm not a good fit for your student, I will definitely let you know because it is uh, important for us to be discussing and I would never want you to take a class that is not the best option for your student. So if it's not the best option, I will definitely tell you that. So thank you so much for learning more about Discern to Learn and I cannot wait to hear from you. I would love to talk to you very soon.